There must be half the villains in London here today. Yeah, old Mrs. Sheraton was a popular lady. Are you going to take those cuffs off for the service? We're not authorised to do that. You can't just keep them chained up like that. Leave it, Phil. What, handcuffs at my mum's funeral? No, that's not right. I said, leave it. Show a bit of respect, will you? Sheraton's lucky to be here at all, if you ask me. That must be Ollie's wife. Mm, Paula. The one with all the mouth is his brother Phil. He's got plenty of form to him. Must be everybody taking the coffin in. Mm. No joy so far. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Ollie Sheridan, how long has he been away? Just over a year, sir. Governor of Walworth's getting a bit indulgent, isn't he? Still, I suppose it's his mother's funeral. Well, after the prison liaison officer tipped us awake, I thought we should see who turned up. You're expecting a gathering of the clans, eh? Well, about half the villains in London, I should think. But these are the two that I'm particularly interested in. That's uh, Terry Hinshelwood and Tony Costigan. And they were Ollie's suspected accomplices on the Lamsden House burglary. Lamsden House? Not one of Sunhill's finest hours? No. Uh, we think they left the area after, after Ollie was arrested. Yes, taking with them the proceeds of the robbery. You're expecting them to show their faces, are you? Well, according to this prison liaison officer, somebody's been looking after Ollie on the inside. You think they were keeping him sweet with the proceeds of the Lamson House robbery? Maybe. Honour among thieves. That's a Sheraton's family motto. Hmm. Where's the funeral? St Luke's. Who have you got going down there? John Bolton and Liz Rotten. Oh. Yeah, I know John Bolton wouldn't have been my first choice for such a sensitive obo either. But the fact is, Liz Rotten and John Bolton are the only two new faces at Sunhill that the Sheratons don't know. Oh, just as long as nobody interferes with the solemnity of the occasion. I've got Don and Rod on standby, and I've impressed on everybody that there to be no arrests until after the ceremony. Four officers? Well, at the very least, it should boost the hymn singing. <laughs> Drawn a blank. Well, bit of a long shot. Expecting the shirt and film to pay their last respects. Well, Meadows never quite got over losing the plot on the Lamson House job, do you? They put Ollie's shirt in the way. Yeah, we never got a tenth of the stuff back, though. No sign of Hinshelwood or Costigan. No, I expect they've gone to the wake. Well, we're hardly likely to get an invite there. Our condolences. Do we know you? Uh, we're from Aging Crisis. Is that right? Yeah, we used to visit your mother. What's this thing? Your aftercare service? We just wanted to pay our respects. It was nice of you to come. <laughs> nice impro, Liz. Well, I had to think of something. Brothers rumbled us. Still, you saved everyone a lot of embarrassment. No point in hanging around here now. Better let the DCI know. Who's driving? You are. Governor, it's John. No, there's nothing to do in here. I mean, there's plenty of low life, but there's no one on our shopping list. I want you to see it through, John. Carry on to the cemetery. You never know who might turn up there. He wants us to go to the cemetery. He must have had a feeling in his water. Follow that hearse. Holding the fort, Tosh. Uh, yes, go. Have you got those statements on the Yukon land stabbing? Um, I was, um, I was just about to, um, to, uh, type in the details. Well, I need them for this afternoon so I can brief Mr Brownlow for his area meeting. A bit short of glad tidings at the moment. 
Well, you never know. We might get a result at the Sheraton Arbo this morning. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Hey, I'm sorry you missed out on all the fun this morning. That's all right. I'm not much of one for funerals. I always think it's my fault. <laughs> yeah. Jack Meadows joining us. No, he's marching the funeral of Oh, yes, I forgot. But putting the mother of all the Sheratons in the ground. Don't you feel just a twinge of sadness that she's passed on? <laughs> Hardly, sir. The grief that family's caused us over the years. My only surprise is they're burying her in consecrated ground. You shouldn't speak ill of the dead, Derek. Yeah, well, in her case, I'll make an exception. At least she won't be troubling us anymore. You shouldn't overtake a funeral procession, Rod. It's disrespectful. Well, you wanted to get here before them, didn't you? Well, there's no one new here. Same cars that were at the church. Man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow, never continues in one step. Well, he seems to be taking a pretty part. Yeah. Because he didn't show more remorse when his mother was still alive. Our sins are just as pleased. Yet, O oh Lord God, most. Hi, Mum. Lord God, most mighty, O oh holy, and most merciful Saviour, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Gaia, I can't handle this. I never should have come out. Take me back, will you? I'm sorry, Paula. What's going on? Looks like it's all got too much for him. Hold on, who's this? Not exactly dressed for a funeral, are they? Could be hint you wouldn't cost a good Could be. It is then. We'll get on to Meadows. They must have thought it was safer to turn up at the cemetery. Make sure the ceremony is not disrupted in any way, and you move in as soon as it's over. But be as discreet as you can. We therefore commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth. Ashes to ashes. So we nick them nice and quietly at the end, right? Yeah, four of us, not two of them. <laughs> sort of odds I like, Rod. Oh, no, look at this. Why? Go get them, Rod! Liz, come on, something's going off! Ambulance required immediately at Shadwell Cemetery. Head injuries about 50 yards from the Welsh Street entrance. OK, Bob, thanks. Ambulance is on its way. Uh, they dumped us. Yeah, I know, we saw. Well, why didn't you do something then? We were too far away, all right? What's going on? They sprung him. Who have? Hinchel Wooden Costigan. What, they were here? Yeah, I must have timed it to the second. Well, couldn't you stop them? I oh, got clean away, got a car waiting at the other gate. I don't believe this! I'm sorry, John. Who's going to tell the DCI? Why don't we all toss for it? I knew you was old, Bill. You couldn't even let us give me mum a decent burial with that busted in, could you? We didn't disturb this burial, your brother did. Well, this is going to look good in the press, isn't it? Police staking out a funeral and letting a prisoner do a runner. Leave it, Phil. You knew all about this, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. This is extremely embarrassing for us, Jack. A prisoner escaping from right under our noses. Yeah, I realise that, sir, but he wasn't our prisoner. Well, that's not how the press are going to see it. Not to mention police interfering with a funeral. What do you think that's going to do for public relations? Well, it wasn't quite like that, sir. I mean, the fact that Hinchwood and Costigan turned up more than justifies our interest in the funeral. That's not the point. There were two criminals at large, and now there's three. That's how the general public are going to view it, anyway. Right, yeah, thanks. Rod. Any luck with the car? Yeah, it was next earlier this morning, Canley High Street. Did you check the coffin, Liz? What? To make sure the old girl didn't get away too. <laughs> John, Liz, I want you to go through the Lambson House file again. Done, Rod. I want everything we've got on Sheraton, Hinchelwood and Costigan. That's previous addresses, known associates in the area, anything like that. Don't you think it's more likely they would have got him straight out of the area? 
Maybe, but I think they'll have taken him somewhere to get the cuffs off first. And what about the rest of the family, Gov? We've got his brother Phil, we've got his wife. Shouldn't we be interviewing them? I'll deal with them. Mr. Meadows, how could I forget? We're uh, giving all his mum a bit of a send off. Yeah, I should have realised that. I'll pop back later. No, come in, have a drink. I don't think I'll be too welcome here. Come upstairs. <laughs> Seems more like a celebration than a wake downstairs. Yeah, pity Ollie couldn't be here though, eh? I don't suppose you had any idea what was going to happen today. Ollie never told me any of what he got up to. He's hardly likely to start now. That's what happens when you marry into this family. Who made the funeral arrangements? Phil's taken care of everything since Ollie went away. You will have to ask him. This escape was planned down to the last detail. So somebody told Hinchelwood and Costigan the exact arrangements. Perhaps it was the vicar. Come on, Paula. Look, even if I did know anything, I'm hardly likely to grasp up my own husband now, am I? So what are you talking to me at all for, then? Yeah, but I know you've got your job to do, Mr Meadows. Well, I never thought I'd hear a Sheraton say that. All right. <sighs> Look, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm worried. I'm not surprised. It's two years on top when we catch up with I him. I don't mean about that. I mean about what could happen to him now they've got him out. What do you mean exactly? Well, they haven't exactly done this out of charity. Come to break up the wake, have you, Mr Meadows? Like you did the funeral? No, I invited him in, Phil. For? It's my house. I can do what I like. No, no, no. This is Ollie's house. Yeah, but Ollie ain't here, is he? That's right. That's why I'm looking after you. Actually, I wanted to ask you a few questions, Mr Sheraton. What about? When was the last time you had contact with Terry Hinchelwood and Tony Costigan? Oh, no, Mr Meadows, you ain't dragging me into this. See, I ain't as stupid as Ollie. Things are run a bit differently round here now. We don't make mistakes, like talking to coppers. Do we, Paula? So if you want to talk to me, you're going to have to do it official, with me brief present. And you better have something pretty good. Otherwise, don't waste my time. Now, if you don't mind, this is a private do. Family only. Don't worry. I won't disturb your party any longer. My condolences, by the way. Cheers. <laughs> So if only a fraction of the jewellery was ever recovered, how did Ollie get convicted? Well, that fraction showed up on his wife's finger in the shape of a diamond solitaire. It's a bit amateurish for a jewel thief, isn't it? Lavishing the proceeds on your wife. Well, you see, he tried to be clever. He had that diamond remounted on another ring. But what he didn't know was that it was certificated. You see, no two diamonds are the same, and that's how the prosecution nailed it. So how come none of the other stuff found its way back onto the market? Well, perhaps it was all sold abroad. Could be, but Sheraton and his crew always used to fence the stuff locally, you know, keep it in the family. Any news? Uh, no, Gov, nothing on Hingerwood and Costigan. Yeah, it looks like they came back, especially for the funeral. Well, they're not the only ones. We've just been out in Sheraton's house. It's like a class of 89 Scrubs reunion down there. Some party. Why don't we raid it? Well, I'm sure Mr Brownlow would love that. Right, yeah, he's here now. I'll tell him. Gov, Paula Sheraton's in the front office, wants to speak to you. Paula, you tired of your party already? I need to talk to you, Mr Meadows. But left to be quick, I've just slipped out. Phil would kill me if he knew I was here. All right, come through here. Take your seats. I shouldn't be telling you this. You haven't told me anything yet. The gear from Ollie's last job. It's never been shared out. Lamsden House? Yeah. What happened to it? It was stashed by Ollie. Except for the diamond that got him put away. He just couldn't resist it. Well, he couldn't or you couldn't. OK. So he used to spoil me. So Hinchelwood and Costigan have come back for their share? Oh, yeah, with a vengeance. They've been trying to get him to come across with the goods ever since he went to prison. But Ollie thought they'd cut him out if he told them. And this was the first time they'd had a chance to get near him? Yeah. So how did they set up the escape? Through Phil. It was Phil's idea, actually. He contacted them when he found out that Ollie was getting a day's parole for the funeral. Phil set it up? 
Phil wanted to cut himself in too. He wasn't doing this out of any sense of family loyalty. A four-way split? No. Three-way. They were going to cut Ollie out. Phil was going to double-cross his own brother? Yeah. So how do you know this? Phil told me. But Ollie's your husband. Why did he tell you? Look, it isn't as black and white as all that. Isn't it? Phil's had to grow up all his life in Ollie's shadow. When Ollie was sent down, Phil wanted to become head of the family. Ollie'd always bullied him, treated him like a no oper This was Phil's chance to take over. Take over what? The family name. The Sheratons, you know, the business. Oh, is that what you call it? <laughs> That's what Ollie used to call it, and his mum, God rest her. I should have got out when they sent Ollie down. But I was vulnerable. I went along with Phil just the same way I'd gone along with Ollie. I let Phil take care of everything. Well, that's understandable. I mean, everything. I see. So what were they going to do with Ollie afterwards? Ditch him. As soon as he'd led him to the gear. They knew you lot would pick him up sooner or later. Well, didn't you warn Ollie? And let him know about me and Phil? I wish I'd never got involved with his family. You know, it's like a protection racket. Paula, I think you know where the gear is. No. Only Ollie knows where it is. He never told me. I reckon he knew somebody would try and get to me when he was on the inside. I don't think he thought it'd be Phil, though. Paula, don't hold out on me if you want to help Ollie. All right. It's stashed in a deposit box. Phil made me hand over the key. Where? A bank? I don't know. All I do know is that Hinshelwood and Costigan are meeting Phil later on. Phil is bringing the key, and they're bringing Ollie. Where? Their mum's house. I've sent Liz and John down to old Mrs Sheraton's house in Elcott Gardens. What makes you think Ollie Sheraton's wife isn't giving us the runaround? Well, why should she do that, sir? Put us off the scent, perhaps? It's the only scent we've got at the moment. I see. And if Paula Sheraton's information is correct, I think there's a good chance of recovering the stolen jewellery from Lambson House as well. I would have thought our priority should be to get Ollie Sheraton back into custody. Well, I think Ollie will have kept the gear locally. It's not like him to work out of London. A bird in the hand, Jack. Yeah, but if we let him run, he might take us to the stash. That's your funeral, so to speak. Any movement? Well, Phil Sheraton's been inside for about half an hour, no sign of the others. At least half of what Paula said was true. Hold on. This could be the other half. Yeah. They're not taking any risks. We're on. DC Scares from DCI Meadows. DCI Meadows from Scase. We've clocked them, sir. Stick with us, Rod. Looks like they're heading towards the motorway. Yeah, another couple of minutes we're going to be off our ground. Well, I wouldn't mind a trip to Brom. Or the Orpha team. You can forget about Brom. How come? Another half mile, I want you to pull him over. Pull him over? We need to arrest him on our ground. This is our only chance of getting hold of Sheraton Stash. Safety first, John. We might lose him on the motorway. Look, we can always bring him back to Sunhill after we've caught them. We can do the official nicking on our ground. Well, like from Carlisle, for instance. Right, when we get to Skid Hill, I want you to pull him over. Hang on, looks like they're doing a Huey. Looks like we're back in business. Right, not too hasty, John. Don't let him see his turn. They're heading back towards Sunhill. Looks like Sheraton's still playing his cards close to his chest. It's all very macabre, don't you think? You were rather tempting fate this morning, Derek. Why? When you're talking about Mark Sheraton, you can almost feel her hand in this reaching out from beyond the grave. Don't. I can still hear her laugh from when I used to nick her for soliciting up in Whitechapel, like a drain. Well, she'd be supping with Jack the Ripper tonight. Yeah, well, I don't fancy his chances. <laughs> no, no, Derek. All right, take it all back. May she rest in peace. No rest for the wicked, I think. Jack? 
Mr. Meadow's not about. Oh, no, sir. He's uh, still out dealing with the Sheraton business. Bit of a fiasco, I gather. I've got the new witness statements from Yukon Lane, sir. If you'd like an update. Rather small beer, don't you think? In the light of what's happened. Castledean bonded securities. It wasn't taking any chances, was it? Just Dolly. Well, they're hardly going to divide up the loot in the vaults, are they? Right, I'll follow him. You nick the lads in the car. It'll be a pleasure. Right, Don, go. Take a door each, keep them inside. I'll get the driver. I'll take back door. Excuse me a minute, sir. Do you mind it? if I take these? You're not going to be needing them for the next few years. All right, all right. One at a time. Don't all rush. You'll all get your turn. Police. Door. DCR Meadows, Sunhill. I want to talk to Mr. Sheridan. I don't believe we have a customer of that name, sir. He came in just before me. Uh, that was a Mr. Kennedy, sir. Yeah, well, whatever he calls himself, I want to talk to him. I'm afraid I can't do that, sir. We operate a policy of complete discretion with regard to our depositors. Look, there's a serious crime being committed on these premises. Now, unless you want you and your firm implicated in it, you better let me into that strong room now. You mean to say I've let a criminal in here? That's right. What sort of criminal is he? A jewel thief. Ollie, one day out and you choose to spend it here. Mr. Meadows. Must be like home from home. You gonna open the box? It's not gonna be a booby prize, is it? Go on. You're not gonna put me to the trouble of getting a warrant, are you? But there's nothing in there. Don't try it, Tom. But I'm telling you, there's nothing in there. Paula. <laughs> Party over, is it? I'm afraid so. So where's Mrs. Sheraton? In heaven. <laughs> where is she? She's gone. Gone where? To the airport. So why's she gone to the airport? She's gone on holiday. Get over the funeral. <laughs> where's she gone exactly? I don't know. Caribbean, Tenerife, Oz. Somewhere nice, she said. Get away from it all. <laughs> 